Hello and welcome to the virtual towers of Binary Arcadia, where the games go on long into the night. I'm Rich, one half of Binary Arcadia, and today I'm going to be introducing you to my personal gaming history. Wow, where to start? It's a journey that started well over 20 years ago for me. How about the beginning? That's a good place to start. My first foray into the world of computer games came way back in 1996. Being a computer-minded household, owing to the fact my dad was into computers through work, we had our first PC when I was quite young, around 10 or 11. It was a computer that my dad had built himself, and because of this, we had a subscription to the monthly magazine, Com Computer Shopper I think it was, something like that. This would come with a demo disc, and it was on one of those fateful demo discs that acquainted me with my first real game, Command & Conquer. For those that don't know, Command & Conquer is a real-time strategy game where you basically fight in a series of skirmishes fighting for one side of a global war. I was instantly hooked and I gamed the hours away without even realising it. Because I was a little late to the party in terms of the series, sequels were out and ready for me to move on to. I consumed them greedily until I played all the titles up to and including Command & Conquer Red Alert 3. Once I'd caught the bug, I couldn't resist sampling a few other RTS titles and it quickly became one of my favourite genres. Noteworthy games for me were Original War, the Age of Empire series, and Act of War. Command & Conquer will always hold a very special place though. What a game to start it all off with. Cheers, tapes. Not having a console of my own up until this point, I'd play on the N64 with my friend. I was introduced to loads of games like Wave Race, Lilac Wars, FIFA 97 Road to the World Cup, and the amazing indoor football on that, and the incredible GoldenEye. We'd work through the single player missions together before he would beat me repeatedly in multiplayer. I'd like to say I let him, but I'm not sure that's the truth. I would love to have had my own 64, but at the time I couldn't afford a console, so made do sharing the experience with my friend. Great friendships are born and developed through gaming. They really can bring people together. And I guess ultimately, that's what this channel is about. Bringing together people of all ages, likes and dislikes in games and sharing with each other's passions for them. Shortly after I moved on to secondary school and met the other half of Binary Arcadia, Mr Tabs himself, again because I didn't have a console I would play with him on his and it was not long after this I'd saved enough money and Tabs had convinced me I should commit to a Dreamcast. At the time the graphics blew me away. Me and Tabs formed our lasting friendship on the Dreamcast. We would play games together and take turns watching each other do parts of the game. Lots of titles impressed me, but one I absolutely loved was Jet Set Radio. For those of you who haven't played Jet Set Radio, it's a game about inline skating set in a comic book futuristic world. The object is to tag various locations with graffiti and stick it to the man. The cell shaded graphics, something I had not seen before, were outstanding and I loved how the difficulty would ramp up sharply with each mission. Character unlocks was a specific highlight for me. The new character would challenge you to complete a series of lines involving grinds, jumps and tricks and you would have to try and copy them exactly. It took some gruelling sessions trying to complete some of these but when you landed the character it was so satisfying. Skies of Arcadia was a special game for me too. Loved the mechanics of battling both characters you played and the ships you travel around in. One other noteworthy game was my first introduction to another favourite genre with Metropolis Street Racer. Looking back it wasn't the greatest driving game ever created and it certainly wasn't the most realistic but it sparked my love of driving games nevertheless. One other thing it proved, and I'm saying this modestly, was that I'm actually pretty good at racing games. In part, owing to this discovery, it quickly became my favourite genre. Even now I can't pass up a good racing or driving game. The Dreamcast also introduced me to online gaming, although not as we know it now, as it was dial-up, a sluggish and unreliable nightmare. Nevertheless, Tabs and I and another friend soon became regular players on PSO, Fantasy Star Online. We really enjoyed the grinding aspect of it, hunting monsters, levelling up, grabbing rare items, although not always legitimately, it was brilliant. Looking back, it was a rather simple game, levels were small and had the same enemies throughout, but somehow just really grabbed us all. Following this, I traded the Dreamcast in to get a PlayStation 2, with again many standout titles. In particular, my first play of the Final Fantasy game with Final Fantasy 12. I know that's shocking. 
Tabs and many of my friends find this hard to believe that my first Final Fantasy was 12. They rattle off standout titles in the series such as 7, 8, 10, the list goes on. Alas, I finally hitched the bandwagon and I started at 12. Hours and hours I spent playing that game. I really liked the gambit system which meant random battles were somewhat automated and certainly felt a lot less intrusive. It certainly made for an enjoyable gaming experience. It was during the ownership of the PS2 that I realised how much time could be invested into playing a game and the sense of reward it could give you. I guess my love of console gaming blossomed on that fact. Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear Solid and many other titles followed. I was finally hooked on console gaming and I can't talk about the PS2 without mentioning Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. This was and still is a true masterpiece in my mind. Thousands of cars, a multitude of tracks and disciplines. I spent a crazy amount of time collecting hundreds of cars and trying to get the special licenses. These were incredibly hard to complete, with the merest of touches on a wall or ever so slightly spilling off the track resulting in failure. I spent so much time trying to best these challenges that the jazz-like music which signalled failure became etched into my brain. Next up for me was the GameCube. I know many people have criticised it, but one of my favourite titles on the cube was Wind Waker. The colourful cel-shaded graphics harking back to Jet Set Radio, bringing a sense of nostalgia perhaps. A brilliant game. Then there was my second time with Fantasy Star Online. I think it was pretty much exactly the same game as on the Dreamcast, but we still played it together online, again. Reliving the magic. Staffed really. One massive game for me was Pikmin. Given the RTS roots of my gaming history, Pikmin got me hooked immediately. I loved it. I loved the style, the mechanics, the characters, the world. It was so much fun to play, although like all the best games, frustrating at times. Not much else really stands out for me on the GameCube looking back. Mario Sunshine was noteworthy in the series, but it wasn't outstanding by Nintendo standards and their massive catalogue of games. PlayStation 3 was the first console I actually got on launch. Some great games on it, and it felt like the first time that graphics had taken a leap forward. Too many games to mention here. Grand Theft Auto 4, Metal Gear Solid 4, Final Fantasy 13, the list goes on and on and on. Now I'm onto the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. A particular game on the Switch is held in very high regard by the channel. We think it's one of the best games of all time, but we've covered that in subsequent videos. Lots of games stand out on the PS4, and the Switch relatively early in its life cycle, I'm sure there are many more to come. That just leaves us with the final question, what do games mean to me? I guess I would say games are a form of escape for me, and I don't mean that in some way I want to escape from the real world, far from it. I love my life, but it allows me to experience things I wouldn't be able to experience in the real world, be it slaying a dragon, driving a Formula One car. It brings me great joy and happiness, and that's all anyone's looking for, really. It's a great way of letting off steam, and in its current guise, with the fast broadband that's available nowadays, it allows me to share that experience with friends, as well as others online. I think gaming, in the right environment, can be extremely unifying, and some of the best times I've had in my life have been while sharing gaming experiences with friends and loved ones. So that's a brief history of my journey through video games. Hopefully you find that interesting and informative and not a complete ball fest. Sorry if you have. If you did like it, don't forget to give us a like. And if you didn't a dislike, we do like your feedback, guys. Anyway, that's enough for me today. Another video for the archive. Stamped and completed.